Hello, this is Carl Freund again with Cambrian AI Research. And today, once again, I have Andrew Feldman, founder and CEO of Cerebrus Systems, who made some uh, pretty startling announcements this week at the Hot Chips Conference. Uh, welcome aboard, Andrew. Hey, Carl, good to see you again. Great to have you, great to have you. So uh, why don't we start with the, uh, let's say the market requirements, the, the uh, challenges customers are having or will soon have with developing and running AI models that you are addressing with your new technologies? Well, I think one of the things we discussed in, in, in our announcement and you know, you, you've been at the forefront of, of recognizing is this sort of extraordinary growth in model size. And this is particularly true for uh, natural language processing models where over the past several years, they've gone from hundreds of millions of parameters to hundreds of billions and now trillions of parameters. They've gone from, you know, days of, 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 of petaflop compute to thousands of days of petaflop compute. And uh, along the way, they've gotten better and better and better at, at their job. And uh, the guys at OpenAI who are sort of pioneers in this have a pretty clear articulation of how the, the, the increase in parameter size uh, relates directly to the, uh, they call it a scaling law to uh, the, the ca capabilities of, of these models. Um, today, the market is really, uh, there are only two companies plus or minus who can, can use and execute models of this size, uh, Google for themselves and uh, Microsoft for, for OpenAI. Uh, we, we don't think that's right. We, we, we would like thousands of companies to be able to uh, work with models of this size and, and benefit uh, from their insight. Uh, so I, I would say today at the, the very high end, it's small, uh, but the demand is enormous. I, I would also remind your listeners, and I know this is something you know very well as a student of the industry, is that in 2018, the largest model was BERT. And it's just a couple years from there, and now it's a, a modest sized model that everybody can run. And so that, that's sort of the, the, the path of our, uh, of our industry. What is huge now uh, will be modest in a year or two and will be used by everybody. What is at the bleeding edge very quickly becomes uh, normative. And so that's sort of the way we see it. Um, I, I think uh, our industry is better off when, when many different research teams can experiment at this size. Uh, um, I, I think that's the, the, the right way to look at it. Okay, okay, great. So that's kind of lay of land of what's going right. on. Big models are a big deal and they're very hard to run. Uh, it's totally the least. It's it costs a fortune. It costs, I mean, a fortune. It, it costs a fortune to train these models. And so there, it's, not, it's not really market, it's not, it doesn't have much market impact because it's so rare. So That's is your right. goal we gotta to change make that. this more pervasive? We gotta change yeah. that. We, we, you know, our, our industry is at its best when uh, many companies and many grad students, many research labs can, can work on a model, right? That's when we're at our best, not when it's cloistered away at, 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 at two uh, massive institutions. Uh, I, I think that, that's the, that's where we've seen a, a, a sea change in innovation. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, the products you've announced this week, the technologies that you're bringing forward that will make a substantial difference in the ability to train you know, multi-trillion parameter models. Sure, so uh, when we founded Cerebris, we, we saw an opportunity to, to solve a series of problems that had never been solved before in, in the history of, of compute. And that was to, to build uh, very large chips, uh, more than a single die, more than a single radical. And th that foundation that we call our wafer scale engine gives us uh, tremendous flexibility that, that, that others don't have. 
Um, our, <clears throat> our first approach uh, for models that are small and medium and large is to, to, to put all the parameters on the wafer. Use our 40 gig and 850,000 cores to have all the parameters, uh, all the work plan for each layer on the wafer and stream in the activations. And this gives you an extraordinarily low latency approach uh, and blisteringly fast training. And it enabled us to, to have utilization of our, of our chip that, that's extremely high. And that, that's part of where performance comes from, is utilization. Uh, now, from the beginning, we knew that, that there was only so much memory you could put on chip and that we would need eventually uh, to uh, have a, a solution that, that supported models that were vastly larger. And uh, the rate of growth of, of these large models um, uh, was staggering, to be honest. But we, we, we saw it coming and we, we, we saw the writing on the wall and the, the work that OpenAI published maybe two years ago about the, the rate of growth of the largest models. You remember the blog post that was so widely uh, commented on. Um, we saw that and we picked up a thread that we had set down uh, early in, in our life, which was uh, to reverse the model to enable uh, the, 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 the parameters or the weights to stream onto our giant wafer, but hold the activations. And in each case, in these two models, one we call pipeline and one we call weight streaming, the idea is to use the massive size of the, the, the wafer to move less information and to move it less often. And moving information in, in AI compute is a huge penalty. It is uh, profoundly power hungry to move information off chip about a, just by way of comparison is probably somewhere between a thousand times more expensive in power to move a bit off chip than it is to move a bit on chip. So every time you have to go to off chip memory, every time you have to do this, uh, you got to move your activations or each time you're just adding latency and cost and power. So we, we invented a technique that uh, partitioned the problem in a very interesting way. So we could uh, hold the uh, parameters off chip uh, in a technology we call uh, memory X uh, and not just the parameter, but the, uh, the weight and the weight state. And that using uh, some, some proprietary signaling technology, uh, we could stream in the parameters while keeping the wafer busy. And what's interesting about the wafer is unlike smaller graphics processing units, uh, um, it can do very large matrix multiplies. And these big networks, what their layers are, are very large matrix multiplies. And so what happens is we're doing these massive calculations. Um, we're holding the results. We're getting new parameters for new weights for, for a new layer. We're holding the results. Then we're streaming all the, the activations or the, the gradient out. And what this did is it allowed us to achieve uh, a disaggregated state. Compute was separate from the memory uh, in the memory X. The memory X could scale to 100, 120 trillion parameters. We could have that feeding one CS2 or 100 CS2s or 192 CS2s. Um, and we could keep the CS2s occupied. And what we showed at, at, at hot shows were. Uh, utilization between 70, low 70s and, and, and high 70% utilization, which is vastly better than graphics processing units or other technologies uh, can do on this type of work. And so that was sort of the, the thinking 
Uh, along the way, we, we thought very hard about uh, the, the communication structure between the, the memory X technology and the CS2s. And we, we, we invented uh, some technology that we called Swarm X, which, which is a fabric which allows us to link together many of these systems in, in a uh, reduction tree. Uh, so we're doing not just communication, but on the fly, there's, there's calculations being done as well. But when you're all said and done, what, what these several technologies invent all under the, the, the weight streaming banner is they allow us to uh, support enormous, enormous networks. They allow us to build very large clusters. Um, they allow those clusters to be uh, configured quickly and easily. And as you know, Carl, having been in the computer industry for many, many years, the setup and configuration and the spreading of work over a large cluster is a, an extraordinarily painful problem, often taking many, many months of, of painstaking work. Because of our architecture, we can do it with a single keystroke or with sort of uh, cut and paste. Uh, oh, that's remarkable. That's remarkable. So you're, you're essential. last time we talked, we talked about beer in the fridge when you're watching the football game. Having beer in the fridge is like, like a cash, as you explained to your dad. And um, so you, you're basically moving an entire store, liquor store full of beer into the kitchen, right? I mean, that, that, that's what we're trying to do. That, that's exactly right. What my, my, my dad, uh, uh, famous professor at Stanford, but he has a little trouble with the remote control and technology is not his thing. And uh, uh, love him so much, but, but not everybody's good at everything. And so explaining to, 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 to my parents what sort of the essence of computer architecture much of what we're trying to do is be sure that nobody's waiting. Be sure that, that when a resource is available, um, the, the information it's supposed to work on is there that minute. And uh, otherwise, you spend a whole lot of time not doing the work you're supposed to be doing. And uh, I, I've learned sort of so much from, from our CTO, Gary Lauterbach, over our 15 year partnership and about computer architecture. And um, thinking about compute as watching a ball game and memory as uh, sort of the fridge and the beer as the data. Um, if the fridge is, 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 is near the TV, uh, you, you can keep watching the game while you're getting your beer and you're drinking your beer and you're enjoying the game and everything's good. Um, but the fridge isn't huge, right? The fridge can only hold so much beer and may maybe you put another fridge in the garage. I know you guys from the Middle West like, like to have a fridge in a freezer, one of those upright freezers in the garage, but maybe you put a fridge there and you, you store some extra stuff in case you have company. And, and then there's Safeway around the corner. And I, I think the, uh, the trick here is to think about how in a most efficient way to enable you to continue to watch the game while drinking your beer, while never having to miss game by, by going very far. And that, that's sort of the, 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 the idea of, of caching. And uh, we have a very, very big fridge in our kitchen. And what that allows us to do is, is keep it stocked. And in fact, when we go and get more beer, we're not doing it because the fridge is empty. That's the worst time to get it, right? What you want to do is, is have beer sort of constantly delivered while the fridge is full. And th th that's sort of a way to think about it. Um, I know that the real computer architects will, 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 will roll over in their grave or grit their teeth with the simplicity of that. But um, it, it is a, a very reasonable explanation for uh, w why having memory uh, close to compute matters. Um, and uh, especially for those of us who enjoy a, a beer and a game. 
<laughs> well, I'd love to have a beer with you and watch a game. Anytime. Uh, that'd be, that'd yeah, be good uh, fun. That'd be my, good fun. My, my Broncos just need to get the quarterback situation. Oh, your Broncos. Oh, your man. Broncos are in a world of hurt. Your Broncos oh, are in a world of hurt. I long for the Peyton Manning days. Oh. But, uh, back to technology. Uh, obviously, the utilization rates that you discussed this week at Hot Chips uh, are a testament to the architectural design you're describing, it works. Okay. So now the question remains, I think for many is, um, so what in terms of, you know, if, if instead of two co companies having enough compute power to run these multi-trillion parameter models, is this gonna become a bigger market? And if so, how will companies uh, around the world access that kind of compute, compute tech platform? I mean, is it going to become available in clouds at some point? And we, we, and we have all sorts of, well, first, I, I think uh, th those of us who, who, who love this industry love, love surfing waves that, that, that nobody else has surfed, right? We, we, we love being out on the edge. And if if, if analysts and, and, and investors can with spreadsheets tell you exactly how many were bought last year and right that, that's that's an established market that, that the world hasn't changed with established markets the world has changed by surfing waves and by by pushing into realms that, that nobody's ever done and that that's the stuff we love and uh it has the weakness, exactly as you described, that, that, that nobody's ever done it, and therefore nobody's got a good spreadsheet that tells you how much was sold last year. Um, right, and that, that, that's, but, but that's where all the fun lives, and that's where the opportunity to transform a landscape is. And as we push forward, as we uh, enable technologies that, that have never been done before, whole markets are born. And that's the, 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 the magic, you know, in, in the, the mid nineties, I was <clears throat> with 12 or 15 or 18 other companies. We, we were pioneering uh, the first set of hardware based switches and routers. And together we, we as an industry, we, we drove the cost of IP networking to zero, right? To the cost of moving a packet. Now, we didn't know and we weren't smart enough or young enough to know that, that it would produce WhatsApp or Viber or, or, or any of these things. But we knew that, that if you made IP networking, packet switch networking, approximately free, other people would invent amazing things and take advantage of it. And after this invest, invest set of inventions starting in about 96 and ending in about 2002 plus or minus, uh, it took a decade, but now everyone in the world can communicate. You can be very poor in the third world and with WhatsApp you can communicate. You, and you can do it with video and you can do it with voice and that changed the world. And there was no market size for it. What's the market size for? Uh, for it. Well, it turns out it's pretty big. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's the same situation here. We, uh, we aren't just trying to, to, to win an arms race to win an arms race. I, I think there are whole segments of artificial intelligence that haven't been explored or have only been explored by one or two groups at one or two companies. And uh, th those are things that, that, that that, that, that's the open space, the, the innovative space we, we, we crave to, to resolve and to bring into focus and make available to the community. And then the community uh, creates great things and then others build on top. And when you're an infrastructure builder, as we are, um, your greatest joy is when uh, uh, other people uh, set great ideas on top of your great idea. <laughs> right, I mean that, that's yeah. when you build roads for a living. Uh, your your joy is when people use them and go far, mm -hmm. and, and that that's the uh, that, that's my answer to how, how big yeah. is the market right now? There are only two users. In two thousand eighteen, there are only two users of Bert. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, now there are thousands around the world. 
Well, that's very exciting stuff. You, you must wake up every morning uh, anxious to ride the next <laughs> ride the next way and drink the next beer. I, I, uh, I think uh, th this is a, a a very interesting market. This is the the birth of something truly profound. We are still in the, the earliest of innings um, and, and the work being done uh, is extraordinary by, by us, uh, by the uh, ML researchers who are, who are creating extraordinarily innovative models, who are experimenting with sparsity, who are d doing uh, so many different things. Um, it's an exciting time to be in the, uh, in, the, in, in the leading edge of the next generation of ways of programming computers and, and using these applications. You know, Carl, the leading edge is always exciting. I, I think, <laughs> I think well, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's always hard. It, it's always interesting. It's always exciting. Um, and it's always rewarding. Yeah, well, Keep, uh, keep innovating. We're anxious to hear what your next uh, surprising announcements would look like and, and getting people actually using these platforms to uh, develop these massive models. I think we're, we're at the dawn of the new age and uh, I think we are. Enjoy, enjoying watching, I enjoy watching you and your team help create that, that, new, that new world. So thank you so much for your time. We look forward to having you back soon and uh, have you as a regular feature here at Cambrian AI Research. Happy to come back, and I know you guys are doing good stuff at Cambrian AI. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate that, and it's, it's a lot of fun watching the innovation happen right before your eyes. Take care, Andrew. Stay well, okay? Be well. Bye-bye. Cheers, guys.